This is part three of our personality theories series, and each one of the theories will answer the questions, what is life all about? How do we screw it up? And what can we do to fix it? This third one is on a guy named Alfred Adler. Yahoo! And he is uh, another one of Freud's protégés. And just like with Jung, Freud and Adler were friends until Adler started thinking for himself. Cause I'm awesome! Freud is so much more famous than Adler, and yet Adler's work is probably more relevant to a modern therapist than Freud's work was. Here's a little history on Adler. He had a really tough childhood. When he was a kid, he was puny, you know, he was a weakling, and he did really poorly in school, so he had a hard time. A few of the events in his childhood that are significant, he slept in the same bed as his brother, Sigmund. And one day, uh, Sigmund was also sickly, and one day Adler woke up and his brother Sigmund had died in the same bed as him. So this was, of course, pretty traumatic. But Adler was also very sickly. And now I'm sick and I sound like this. And one time when he was ill, the doctor was talking to his dad and, you know, back in those days, doctors weren't particularly good with the bedside manner. And he basically told his dad that Adler was going to die before morning. So here's this poor little boy laying in bed sick and hearing the doctor say that he was getting ready to die. And of course, he didn't die. Another story is that Adler's teacher met with his dad and told him that Adler was, you know, dumb. I'll knock your brains out of your head, Annie. Uh, he wasn't good at academics and that... Uh, his dad should consider taking him out of school and putting him into a trade like being a cobbler to make shoes or something like that. Well, Adler went on to become a medical doctor and one of the leading theorists in the field of psychology. So his success was huge in spite of having this really tough childhood. Adler's early experiences really influenced his personality theory. His idea was that People tend to suffer from an inferiority complex. In fact, all of us do. And he justified this by saying that, you know, human infants are truly inferior. They're weaker than adults. They're more ignorant than adults. They can't survive on their own. They really are inferior. So inferiority can manifest itself in different ways. Traditionally, you might think of someone who feels inferior as someone who's sort of depressed and they keep their head down and they're uh, not sure of themselves uh, or very quiet and shy. This is all your fault, you. But inferiority can also manifest as someone who's a bragger. How's bragging camp going? A bully or a snob. If you think about those people, a bragger, a bully, and a snob, those aren't behaviors that you engage in if you feel good about yourself. Those are behaviors that you engage in if you internally feel inferior. So I had a friend when I was a kid, and back in those days, they didn't have cell phones. But they had come up with uh, bag phones for the car. And this was a huge status symbol back in the 80s. If you had a car phone, you had arrived. You were really styling. I have arrived. The other thing back then that was a big status symbol was a Rolex watch. And another was to have a gold card, credit card. My friend was not rich. You know, he was working at a fast food restaurant. And he really did have an inferiority complex. He was the bragger type. He would brag, and you tell a story, he's got one better than you. So he couldn't afford a car phone, but he bought something called a car phony, which was like just a plastic fake antenna that you stick on the back of your car so people think that you got a car phone. He also had a fake Rolex that he paid about $19 for, and he did have a, a legitimate gold card. So I remember him showing me that he practiced taking out his wallet <laughs> and showing his Rolex as he pulled out the gold card. So this guy outgrew his inferiority and grew into a fine man. Okay, cut to the three questions. What is life all about? 
how do we screw it up, and how do we fix it. For Adler, what life is all about is achieving your potential. He called it realizing our ideals. We screw it up by giving in to these feelings of inferiority, and we fix it by using our sense of inferiority as a motivator to do better. I had an uncle who had polio as a kid, and it caused him to have a withered leg. The guy certainly felt inferior because of his deformity, but he used that as a motivator. And he eventually, by working really hard, ended up playing college football for the Citadel and later coaching the Citadel football team and working as a professor of mathematics at the Citadel. He was a high achiever and he used his sense of inferiority as a motivator. Look him up, his name was Ephraim Seabrook, class of 1929.